Okay. So it would be nice. I used to have this view of the world that like the girl goes with the guy she's meant to be with and if you have a good enough connection, things will work out and that kind of stuff. In reality, it doesn't work like that, right? Um, I'll tell you, for example, from traveling, right? So many times you're traveling, you meet a girl, it's amazing. You go out of town, you come back, whatever. And you're, you know, even you're talking to her, you get to know her, whatever. And you have, you're the, you're the amazing, I call it like the, I'm the foreign filet mignon and then they have like the local like horse meat, right? That they, they end up like, they, they have some local shit boyfriend instead, right? And it's not because, you know, he's better for her or he's higher value than you. It's because he's there. It's because he's convenient, right? And so many times in my game, I've, um, well, early on in my game, I would lose by having these like great sets and great connections and then just taking a number. And then some other guy is there at the end of the night, takes her home, and your number is forgotten when she sleeps with some other guy. And then as I've gotten better in game, I was that other guy. Right? As, as I've gotten better in game, I've had so many sets where the girl spends all night with some guy, really, really likes him, and then for whatever reason, doesn't work out, I'm there, I pull her. Right? I've had girls that liked me to the ends of the earth and just didn't work out for whatever logistical reason, friends, bullshit. I've had girls that absolutely did not like me at all, um, and then we ended up having sex. Um, circumstance matters. And really, the key thing is this. It's not that like getting able to like you more and more and more and more and more is what's going to do it for you. There's a threshold. There's I like this guy enough to sleep with him. <clears throat> and then if he, she likes you enough to sleep with you, you're in a category with every other guy she likes enough to sleep with. And if you're the one that's in front of her at that moment that is of that category, she'll sleep with you. Right? Um, and I mean, I can, I can tell you so many stories that will make you just like maybe disgusted with women that'll make you maybe distrust women, right? So many stories about like, fuck, you want a story? Here's a story, okay? So uh, I'm out teaching a one-on-one -on -one boot camp uh, with a student and um, I'm running a set, um, but I I'm mostly want the student to, to do approaches and learn and that kind of stuff. So I'm doing a demo. Just so happens it's going really, really well. Um, but girl has to go to the bathroom, um, like legitimately her bladder is full, has to go to the bathroom. So I talked to the student a bit and he's like, okay, let's go do another set and then debrief and do some more sets, et cetera. So I'm like, okay, cool. Let me go grab this girl's number. So I go grab the girl's number um, just because, you know, she was hot and she liked me. And as I'm getting the number, she's kind of like, oh, don't go, stay around. And then she like pulls me over and makes out with me. I'm like, fuck, well, I don't want to go now. But I still go, I still just take her home. I'm like, listen, I got to go with, with, my, with my client, I, whatever. So um, I bounce, we go do a debrief. And then afterwards, it's kind of like right at the end of the night, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to go back to that bar and just see, right? And the student's still with me. He's like, do you mind if I go with you? I'm like, yeah, you can go with me. But I'm going to tell you right now, there's most, like, you think you're, I'm going to go back and just because she liked me, she's going to be waiting for me or something like that. I'm going to tell you right now, probably like 60%, like she's gone. 30%, she's making out with some other dude. 10% she's there and like available. I'm just telling you that's like the ratio, right? So we go back and she's making up with this like massive, like, like massive jacked black guy. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I'm, basically, I'm like, see, I told you, right? Um, so I go back in and I basically like pull her straight off the black guy and start making out with her. <laughs> and this guy's like fucking pissed he's livid it's a really hard situation because he's with a friend as well and his friend is like has a really good game too and his friend is with her friend and they like each other so I'm getting all this shit of like the other friend running interference the girl running interference but the girl seems to have chosen me right so looks all good eventually the dude tells his friend um, to just like back off and like it's not going to happen for him, et cetera. So it looks like we have this pull. But then the guy's kind of like butthurt and, 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 and obnoxious and whatnot. He's like, I oh, find you guys can go, but just like walk me to my car first. And he's like stalling and dragging and whatnot. He, he knows he doesn't have a chance, but he's just like, he's like, you know, he feels like shit, obviously. Um, and he's kind of, kind of dragging it out. And then as we are, um, we're like right there about to, like we're about to maybe be able to get rid of him. And I've been kind of babysitting the girl the whole time, walking with her, whatever. And there's this moment where I can finally get rid of the guy. And I'm like, I go over to just talk to him and just like get him out of the set. In that like 30 seconds <laughs> that I go, whatever, get the guy out of the set. Um, there's some guy that's been like texting this girl like all evening, texting, calling, whatever. And he's been, she's been kind of ignoring because um, she's busy with making out with me, making out with the other guy, whatever. Um, anyway, she picks up the phone for this guy now, right? 
And it turns out this is, I find this out later, but it turns out this is a guy she's actually, she's had sex with before. They've had, they have something of a relationship. And by sheer dumb random chance, turns out he's like three blocks away from her. And she just happens to tell him her location. So now she's in the situation where it's super awkward if she doesn't meet up with him. And so now like I, you know, end up getting, getting, pulling some shenanigans, getting her isolated, whatever. But this guy keeps texting and keeps calling and he, she's unwilling to give up the like, the relationship with a guy she's already hooked up with because she has whatever emotional connection there and eventually it doesn't go down for me, right? So after all that, nothing, right? Now, granted, there's a lot of better ways I could run that. Like I could have just, if I wasn't with this dude, I could just stayed in the first place and pulled her in the first place without all the bullshit. But just think about the night that girl had, right? Think, of, think about like what has to have gone on like in terms of that girl's identity in order to like go through all that or what like, like, oh, fuck this guy or this guy or this guy, you know, whatever. <laughs> right, like legitimately, like she was gonna fuck somebody. Right? Um, so as much as we'd like to think that it's all like, did you do the best game? You know, good shit can happen. Good shit can happen from being in the right situation. Bad shit can happen from from just being wrong place, wrong time. Right? I've had other girls. Shit. I mean, here's another one that that. Uh, I mean, it's it's not a pretty factor, but it's it's a fact of life. Um, I can't tell you how many times there's you have really good game and she really likes you, but she's with friends. And there's some guy or a group of guys that have an after party or have drugs or have a connection. And they go with them because, not because they're hotter than you, not because the girl likes you more, but because her friends drag her for the drugs or maybe the girl fucking just likes drugs. You know what I mean? Like different things. There's so many shitty, shoddy, fucked up things that can happen in game. What you're really doing is you're putting yourself in the best possible circumstance for things to go your way, right? And you can make moralistic judgments. You absolutely can. You can say like, oh, I don't want a girl if she would ditch me for you know, her friends that are going with guys with drugs. And to be fair, maybe that's a fair point. Um, and in terms of if you're looking for like the mother of your children, that may be a very fair point. But in terms of if you're playing the game you know, to hook up, if you're playing the game for winning tonight, um, there's a lot that goes on with that. And even a situation like, so that's, that's night game and there's a lot more, more chaos, but even a situation like day game, right? So in the moment, in the moment when she's hanging out with you, she really, really likes you. In that moment, she has good emotions flowing through her body. It makes sense. She's feeling romantic thoughts. She wants to hang out with you, right? Now she goes and gets her luggage. Well, now she's hanging out with a friend and now it'd be awkward to leave the friend. Also, this is a guy friend. You don't even know what their history is. There might be a history there that you, you don't know about that would make it extra awkward or maybe even they're, you know, they're an item, right? Even beyond that, even if it was a girlfriend or something like that, you know, she's got her luggage, she's leaving town in a couple of days, or a couple hours, sorry, and she has to justify to herself, okay, well, I'm leaving town in just a couple, so if I go do this, it's purely a one-night stand. If I go do this one-night stand, or not even once, one afternoon stand, right? One, one hour stand, right? If I go do this, like, that changes my perception of myself, right? There's no possibility of this, so maybe she's just not down for it at that point. So there's so much that can change. There's so many things that can go wrong. Um, and yes, following the girl is a little bit needy. But losing the girl, and like as in having her out of your sight, out of mind, that kind of stuff, is just not functional. It doesn't functionally work, right? And here's a, a, a thing I wanna tell you guys. So I hear this from guys so often, right? I hear this, this idea of like, oh, I don't wanna be needy, right? I, if, I, if I follow her, will that be needy? If I don't let her go, will that be needy? Um, Worrying about what's needy is one of the neediest things you can possibly do, okay? If you're sitting there worrying about a behavior being needy, that's incredibly needy. You know what's not needy? What's not needy is saying, you know what, I'm gonna go with her and even if it makes me look lame, I trust that I'm cool enough that my presence is gonna make things better, right? Because it's very easy in, in game to have this mentality of like, oh, if I'm scarce, if I don't text her back, then I'm high value, right? You know what's actually high value? Is being high value. It's being a high value guy when she interacts with you, right? If your value is coming from your absence, that's difficult because it's hard to have sex with a girl in your absence, <laughs> okay? Right? You need to figure out a way to have value in your presence and you need to trust yourself for that. And you need to believe that if you're there to solve the problem, good things will happen. Even if you've lost a lot of value, even if it's been needy, even if it's been weird, even whatever, okay? And Sometimes it's not fair. I'll tell you guys another, another field report. It's another like, fucked up field report. Um, it, it had a good ending, but fucked up field report. So this is when I was in Vegas. Um, I was talking to a really hot girl. She had a friend, so it's two girls. And I had um, 
a wingman on her friend. And in fact, there are a couple wingmen on her friend. I'd had one guy winging, she didn't like him, had another guy winging, and they seemed to be okay together. Um, but then eventually her friend's like, we gotta go to the bathroom, right? And so, not being worried about being needy, we went with them to the bathroom. Oh yeah, the bathroom's over here, we'll walk you over. We walk them over to the bathroom, they go to the bathroom, I go to the bathroom too, because I told you guys, make sure that your bladder's on the same schedule as her, right? And then um, we're outside of the bathroom and we just talk to some like random people and make it look like we're not just creepily waiting around. Also the fact that I'm with my friend makes it better so I can talk to him, right? So she comes out and they're in the bathroom for a while, which means they're talking, right? And my, this set's been really good. I think at this point I'd already made out with my girl. I'd, I'd screened her for if she's down and it was like all the indicators were there. She was basically super down, right? We come out, but instead of coming and joining me and my friend, she walks straight the fuck past us, right? So I grab her, I pull her over, like, hey, what's up, da, da, da. and then she, she says, hey, listen, um, my friend isn't into your friends. Um, you, better have, you better have another guy if you wanna, be in, if you wanna stay in the game. <laughs> <laughs> <All right? laughs> Which is funny if you think about it, because first of all, she basically said, like, I want you to sleep with me, and this is how to do it. Right? And also, you have to understand, she was just in the bathroom for this long ass time. So you know that the debate in there was like, I wanna go home with these guys, no fucking way. I wanna go home with these guys, no fucking way. Right? So that was the debate. Um, so in any case, at this point, I was like, okay, so what's your friend's type, right? What kind of guy does she like? Because um, I was on an immersion program and I had a lot of, a lot of <laughs> options available to me. Right? And she told me a type. And so I knew about three guys who were that type. So I texted all three of them, meet me at this place. And I just hoped that one of them would be there. And then I walked, her, walked them through the club to this place. Now this was like a crazy, like packed, crowded, like oppressively <laughs> loud club. We're like, we're getting bumped. We're getting drinks spilled on us as we're walking through the club. The bouncer's telling us move it along is really like an egregious experience. So I'm, I'm, I'm keeping them together, going through this, no fun at all. And meanwhile, her friend is like annoyed with my friend even being there because I, I, I haven't told him like, you know, it's not gonna work out for him yet. And so she's annoyed and I have to try to keep them separated a little bit so she doesn't get so annoyed she drags her friend away. So eventually I get into this heroic task to get them all the way to the other side of the club. When I do get there, thankfully, my friend is waiting for me, one of the three, right? And then I, I introduce her to him. I explain to the other guy really quick, sorry, not, not my doing, but it just isn't gonna work out for you. And then they, they actually hit it off, right? They, so I'm like, yes, this is good. Thank, there's, there, is, there is a God, right? Um, and then something very interesting happens. The girl I was talking to flips 180 degrees and totally hates me. And she starts being like, fuck you, you're so like, you're so like possessive and weird. Just like, there's something like very try hard about you. It's like, you're, you're ruining my Vegas vacation. Can't you just be normal? It's like, I, I didn't come here to have a boyfriend. I came here to party, All right? She just gets like really, really like weird and awkward about everything. Um, and so, um, and so basically she just like completely flips on me, turns 180 degrees, et cetera. Um, and the question is why? What happened here? Huh? She, she Exactly, right? So I had been this guy that wasn't try hard. I was this guy that she, she couldn't have. I was aloof, I was non-needy. She was chasing me. Then she told me, hey, can you find a friend for my friend? And I did it, right? But the fact that I went to that much effort to get a friend for her friend, well, I must've really wanted to fuck her, right? So now I'm like this try hard guy. I'm like this possessive guy. I'm like all these, all these negative things, right? And so she literally screamed at me and gave me shit for like probably 20 minutes. And then meanwhile, she'd like pull other guys next to her at the bar and start like talking to them and flirting with them to try and like make me jealous slash get rid of me. And so like when the guy was like lame, I would just like look at her and I'd just laugh at her and be like, this guy, whatever. And when the guy was kind of cool, I would actually get slightly possessive and be a little bit of a dick to him in just enough of a way to get rid of him. And then she'd get more pissed off at me, but at least he'd be gone. <laughs> um, so this happened for about 20 minutes. And then thankfully, at the end of all this, um, my friend and um, another girl were hitting it off. And the other girl had A, seen me be amazing in the first place. B, had s heard how much the girl liked me in the bathroom when she was trying to like get pulled by me. And then she had seen all the bullshit that was going on and how I like stayed unfazed by it. And also now she had an agenda where she wanted to go with my friend. And she looked at her she's like, are you fucking stupid? This guy's amazing. Come on, shut the fuck up, we're, go we're going. And just grabs her friend and basically pulls her for me. And then once we've left the club, like everything got normal again, 
sex was had by all, it was good, right? Um, but that's fucking crazy. That's fucking crazy, right? And I was the same per. Well, I'm, technically, in her eyes, I was. Here's the thing: in her eyes, I wasn't the same person anymore, right? Because she saw me as one way, and then she saw me as another way. So literally, for her, I wasn't the same person. But it's crazy how one little thing can completely flip it. And so here's what I want you to think about, right? When you think about a girl likes you, you think of this static thing, oh, either she likes you or doesn't like you. She's like, if she likes me enough, she should like me enough. She should have accountability, right? Do you ever see the movie As Good As It Gets? Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah? There's a great line in that movie, all right? So this guy's a, an author, and there's this like, girl fan, female fan, and she goes, how do you write women so well as an author? And he goes, well, I think of a man, and I take away reason and accountability, all right? Um, it's kind of that way, kind of a little that way in the moment, right? Um, is the thing is, the girl doesn't like you, period. She likes you if, okay? She likes you if you do everything right. She likes you if you know how to get her home without making her feel slutty. She likes you if you know the right way to escalate on her to make it feel good for her. As soon as any of those things is no longer true, she doesn't like you if anymore. You see that? So her liking you is very conditional. It's not like guys who are like, oh, she's hot, I like her. Oh, she's hot, I want to sleep with her. Oh, she has this like, resume where I can brag to my friends about it, I want her. Right? For the girl, it's much more about the experience, it's much more about the social feedback, those kind of things. And so her liking you or not liking you is very variable. It can change moment to moment to moment. And if you're in her presence and can manage that and control how that goes, you have a good shot. As soon as you're out of her presence, you have no control over how that changes from moment to moment. Right? And also, like, say your situation, right? Girl likes you, she goes, gets her suitcases, gets in a different state of mind, whatever. She's viewing you differently because she's not in that same emotional state. Or maybe she's looking at the moment, it's like, oh, it's so magic. It just, like, just happened, this guy was so spontaneous and, and ballsy. Right? And then later on, when she's in a slightly different state, the ballsiness becomes tryhard. He was so ballsy because he was so tryhard. Or maybe it was like, I was chasing him so hard, and then later on, it's like, he didn't even care about me at all. It's just a slightly different narrative of the same fact because there's different emotions flowing through her. All right, so understand that. There's no like, if she liked me enough. The girl likes you if. All right? Simple as. All right? And that's even, that's even kind of true in a relationship. The longer the, rela the relationship, the more history you have, the more you know, the, more the girl really actually knows and, and, and is responding to the real you. But even in a relationship, right? In a relationship, as long as it's going well, you're like, you know, you're Superman and He-Man and the most like stand-up, amazing, nice, good guy. As soon as... You, you lose value in her eyes or as soon as she wants to be with somebody else or as soon as the relationship's on the rocks, now all of a sudden you're like evil and awful and whatever, right? And it's, you're the same facts. It's the same facts for six months, a year, three years, five years. But when the emotions are different, the interpretation of those facts is completely different, right? So don't think that like girls liking you is this static thing. Girls like you if. They like you if you continue to be that person. They like you if the right emotions are there. They like you if you're the best option for them. Right. And on one hand, that's kind of fucked up. On another hand, it's kind of amazing. Right? It's kind of fucked up because it means that what you have, you could lose so quickly. On the other hand, it means that, um, one, you can meet girls so easily just by being amazing. Right? You can step up and be better than their other options. And two, it's kind of an interesting thing because it forces you to be your best self. Right? It's actually, it's almost like girls are this, like, this force in the universe per, like, forcing you to step up. Because if you don't step up, they will punish you. If you do step up, they will reward you, right? It's, it's kind, of, kind of cool in that way. Um, but the key thing to keep in mind, though, is, is that they like you if, they don't like you unconditionally. And you really want to be in their presence because as long as you are present, you can control the narrative, you can control the situation, you're in charge of things, and you can make things go well. As soon as, you're, as, soon as they're out of sight, as soon as they're not around, things will just naturally go against you.